Hi, my name is Pong Ying, and I'm a developer programs engineer on Google Commerce. And speaking with me today are Mihai Aonescu, a developer advocate with a storied history on Google Chrome, and a product manager for Google Checkout, Satyajit Saugar. Uh, I'm really excited and nervous about today, <laughs> mostly nervous. This marks our first ever commerce track at Google I.O., and we hope to kick it off with a bang. We have a lot of great information to share with you. And if you want to rate us, you can use a speaker meter, speaker meter link. And then if you want to shout us out on Twitter, use uh, pound commerce. So today, we'll be covering a little bit of everything. First, we'll cover what checkout is and the benefits that it provides developers like yourself. Then, since checkout is an e-commerce enabler for many Google products and APIs, we'll show you the various ways of implementing checkout then, we'll dive into how Checkout works and the APIs behind it. Uh, once you've established a foundation of knowledge, we'll show you how these tools and APIs are used in the real world. Finally, we'll finish with the challenges that, uh, that Checkout has faced and provide a preview of commerce at Google. So, let's get started with a brief overview of what Checkout is. Checkout is an alternative purchase flow and what that means is instead of just setting the payment credentials and the amount to your payment processor, instead, you'll need to define, that the, you'll need to define the items a customer is purchasing, uh, any discounts, and your tax and shipping settings, settings, and send that to Google Checkout. And what this allows Checkout to do is control the entire purchase flow, from entering in uh, from a customer creating an account or signing in, to them choosing the shipping methods, uh, adding new payment methods and specifying where they want to ship it to, then confirming the order and viewing the receipt page. This, since the merchant defines all of the customer information as well, or all of the order information, a customer can easily log into Google Checkout and view their order history from multiple stores. Uh, and just so you know, the Ping Pong Superstore is in no way related to myself. The merchant can also log in and see a history of sales. And since the orders take place on Google Checkout, they can use the, merchant, the Google Checkout Merchant Center to process these orders, or they can use the notification and order history or, and order processing APIs to process them from their server. So put your hand up if you've purchased something from the web in the past two weeks. It could be an app. It could be something retail. That looks like a lot of you. And then how many of you are selling online, sold something from the web in the past two weeks? Wow, you guys are all attending the right session. You've all probably encountered a few really annoying parts of purchasing and selling online, well, you know, other than paying your credit card bills. And this is just a short anecdote from my personal experiences. So a majority of my team is here, and some of us are going to go to Yosemite this weekend to go hiking. I think we're going to go uh, try to hike Half Dome. Uh, my friends told me it's pretty scenic, so I wanted to buy a pretty nice camera to bring with me and take some awesome photos. Uh, I found this one at Rich Camera, and it had the best price I could find online, so I purchased it there. I also wanted a pair of uh, hiking shoes. Last time I was at Yosemite, I slipped and fell once. It was kind of embarrassing. Um, and I found this pair at a mom and pop shop uh, that I didn't really know, but I still bought them anyway. And lastly, uh, I wanted to buy a camera bag because I didn't want this camera to swing around my neck while I hiked. Uh, I was in the store the other day, and I found one that I liked, but it was a little bit expensive in the store. So I pulled out my cell phone, and I purchased it. Well, I did comparison shopping first, and then I purchased it through my cell phone in the store. And here are some of the pain points. For most separate sites, you need to fill in the same information over and over again, creating numerous separate accounts at multiple merchants. I don't know about you, but sometimes I have to try two to three different login password combinations before I'm actually logged in at sites I don't often use. And if I don't recognize the store, it's very difficult, me, it's very difficult for me to provide my payment credentials, even if they have the best price by far. Lastly, the mobile, purchase, mobile purchases is a market that's growing very quickly. And not all stores have a mobile-specific uh, mobile purchase flow. And if you tried something, if you've tried purchasing something from your cell phone, you probably know that's not a great experience. You know, entering your, your credentials on a virtual keyboard is not the most pleasant of experiences. So Google Checkout can help solve these problems. For buyers, take a look at what Google has done internally. Almost all of Google's products use Checkout to monetize, and a single account can be used across all of them. 
Not only can one account be used to purchase from Google, but it can be used to purchase from external sites such as B&H Photo, uh, Buy.com, eBags, and thousands more. Like OpenID and OAuth, a single account to enable transactions from across the web is a powerful tool. This account also enables you to purchase with a few clicks across multiple platforms from all merchants that have implemented checkout. Purchasing from a Zoom, NexSS, Google TV is now simple and easy with only a few clicks. Lastly, checkout serves as an intermediary to the merchant so that they never receive your payment credentials. This means that should they be hacked, you don't have to go out and get a new credit card. For developers and merchants, implementing the API enables tens of millions of buyers to purchase from your site with a few simple clicks. And regardless of the device that your buyer may be using, the checkout flow automatically scales and handles device limitations. Instead of having to spend time coding out buy flows in multiple device formats, checkout allows you to focus on your core product. We also have the payment guarantee, which ensures payments for orders covered. And 98% of all checkout orders are covered by this payment guarantee. Uh, there's also a fraud engine, or a, a powerful risk engine, that analyzes each order. And it should, be, should it be deemed fraudulent, automatically cancels it. An added benefit of having checkout serve as an in intermediary is that we handle PCI compliance for you. How many of you know what PCI compliance is? Please put up your hands. That's a, lot, that's a lot of you. That's more than I expected. But for those of you who don't, you don't even need to know what PCI compliance is. Uh, since you never receive the customer's credit card information to receive payments, you don't need to be certified for PCI compliance. And just in case you're curious, it's, uh, it's a certification that ensures your security systems are up to the standards set by the Payment Card Industry Standard Council. And it can be expensive and, uh, it, it be expensive and time consuming to get, acquire. Lastly, we want to ensure that each API is simple to use and easy to implement. We provide tools and client libraries to make integration a breeze. But that's not the limit of Checkout's functionality. Checkout is an e-commerce enabler and allows for purchases across a variety of products. Did you know that if, you, if, did you know that if you've ever purchased an Android application, a Chrome Web Store application, an Apps Marketplace app, or even purchased storage for Picasa, that you already have a Google Checkout account. And this is just a small sample list of Google products that use Checkout to monetize. E-commerce in general is growing by leaps and bounds, and it seems like new e-commerce sites are opening every day. Group buy, sample sales, app stores, music, music, video, vacations, services, more and more things are being sold online. And more importantly, more and more people are purchasing these things. Leveraging our own products, we've seen tremendous growth in Checkout. So tremendous that I don't even have PR-approved hard numbers that I can share with you. So I have to use an abstract unit of measure of a rainbow. And I can only say that the number of transactions has not only increased to a double rainbow, but it's increased to a triple rainbow. What does it mean? It means that the number of transactions has grown threefold in the six months between June and December of 2010. And the graph, while a little bit artsy, is an accurate representation of the daily transaction volume of checkout. So, now that you're hopefully interested in implementing Checkout, Mihai is going to show you the various ways to integrate. Thank you, Pong. How are you guys doing? All right. Welcome to the first ever commerce track at Google I.O. So, you're excited about e-commerce, right? Okay, you're at the right session. And I know e-commerce is fun, especially when you're making money. Now, Pong gave you a good overview of what Google Checkout is all about. Now, let's see how we can put all that together and build e-commerce solutions. There are quite a few ways to integrate Google Checkout, from very simple implementations all the way to advanced ones. The simple implementations abstract away the complexities of the checkout API, while the advanced ones take full advantage of it. For the rest of the talk, we'll go over these uh, popular integrations, have some fun with sample code, then learn more about the checkout API, 
And finally, see how everything comes together in a real case e-commerce implementation. Let's start with the Buy Now button, the simplest way to implement Google Checkout. The Buy Now button was specifically designed to sell a single item in one transaction. Only minimal programming skills are required. You just copy and paste a pre-generated HTML code snippet. Next, we have the store gadget. With a store gadget, you get to sell multiple items per transaction, and you also get a simple inventory management through Google Docs spreadsheet. Adding a store gadget is as simple as adding a buy now button. Copy and paste a code snippet. You get all that through an online wizard which generates the online store and the inventory spreadsheet. Now, the store gadget and the buy now button are simple and easy to use. But what if you want more features or more options? Let's say you want more control over your website look and feel, or you want to use your own order processing system instead of the Google Merchant Center. For that, you need a shopping cart solution. Implementations vary from very basic, where you add a pre-integrated shopping cart, to very complex, custom-built carts where you have full control over every aspect of the implementation. You decide which solution is right for you based on your e-commerce side needs. You can implement the cart yourself, you can use a shopping cart from Google, or you can use a shopping cart from one of our integration partners. If you want to learn more about advanced e-commerce solutions or custom-built carts, we actually have quite a few partners here at Google I.O., and I encourage you to go talk to them. They're in the developer sandbox area uh, right here on this floor. Now, to show you how simple it is to add a shopping cart to your site, we added one right here on this page. This is not a screenshot. It's a real shopping cart provided by Google. I can add items to the cart. I can change my mind and update the cart. And then I can buy all this stuff with one click. Now, how easy was it to add that shopping cart? It was just a simple two-step process. First, include a Google Shopping Cart script, basically one line of code. Next, annotate your products with various attributes, just a few more lines of code. The annotations are used by the Shopping Cart script to identify the items for sale and update the Shopping Cart. And that's all it takes to add a simple shopping cart to your site. Now, how about customizing the shopping cart, making it fit nicely with your website? Well, you can also do that. The Google Shopping Cart is built with JavaScript and CSS, and thus it's very customizable. For example, you can control the cart location, place it anywhere on the page, not just the default top corner. You can also change the appearance of the cart. Use your own images, colors, borders, backgrounds, and so forth. And finally, you have full control over the entire behavior of the cart. As I mentioned, the cart is built with JavaScript, and it offers you JavaScript functions to which you can control, for example, you can query or change the items in the cart, or you can use JavaScript callbacks to handle all kinds of cart events. Now, this is very powerful. And later in the talk, we'll see how we can use the JavaScript shopping cart functions together with the checkout API to build a real e-commerce solution. But before that, let's do a quick recap of the integration solutions we've seen so far. From easier to advanced, the Buy Now button is the simplest to implement, specifically designed to sell a single item per transaction. 
The store gadget allows you to sell multiple items per transaction while maintaining the simplicity and ease of the implementation. And finally, shopping carts come in a variety of implementations. From very basic, as we just saw, where you can add a shopping cart with simple HTML and CSS, to very complex custom-built cards with powerful features. With that said, now it's a good time to take a deep dive into the Checkout API. Pong will take over again and give you a, a Checkout API crash course. Thanks, Mihai. It's pretty simple and powerful, right? Uh, <laughs> now, let's understand how these tools work and then continue building out your foundation of knowledge of the Checkout API. So Checkout is comprised of several APIs. There are APIs that enable purchases, the Cart API, which allows you to define the items being purchased and your tax and shipping settings, the Merge Calculations API, which allows you to define a URL that will call back to you during your customer's buy flow that allows you to custom calculate discounts, taxes, shipping, and, and shipping values. We have uh, APIs for fulfillment, the notification API, where Checkout will send your server notifications for syncing and order processing. Uh, there is the notification history API that allows your server to pull for notifications should you miss any or encounter any errors processing them. And there's an the order processing API, which allows you to make requests to process orders, such as charge, ship, cancel, archive, refund, and so on. Lastly, we have APIs for reporting. Well, we have an API for reporting. The order report API allows you to make requests to download CSVs of orders. So the three main APIs that you need to know about and that we're going to cover today are the cart API, the notification API, and the order processing API. And here we have some example cart API XML. As stated previously, since checkout is an alternative purchase flow, you're going to need to convert your representation of the buyer's cart into the cart API XML. And we have client libraries to help you in this process. Uh, there's a couple components of this cart. The first is the items. And for each item, uh, the required tags are item name, name of the item, the description, the price of the item, and currency, and the number of items being sold, the quantity of it. Next, there's shipping and taxes. With shipping, you have several options. With flat rate shipping, you basically define a flat rate for a given geographic area. For carrier calculated, we'll try to calculate the shipping rate on your behalf by querying the carriers, uh, provided that you provided the origin, destination, weight, and size of the package. And lastly is merchant calculated shipping. And as spoken before, we'll call back to your server, uh, and your server will need to determine the rate and then respond to the request. Next, there's tax tables. And tax tables are pretty simple. It's just basically a fixed percentage uh, for a given geographic area. And you can have multiple tax tables for different types of items. Uh, next, once you've created the cart, you need to post the cart to our server. And there's two methods of doing this. There is the client to server cart posts, which is basically an HTML form post where you generate the cart content on the request. And then once the customer is ready to check out, they click the Google Checkout button, which then posts the cart to Google Checkout. Uh, the cart is composed of two, uh, uh, actually the form post is composed of two name value pairs. You have the cart, which is a base64 encoded XML representation, uh, representation of the XML, of the cart X API XML, and the signature, which is a base64 representation of the cart HMAC SHA-1 hash, uh, using the merchant's merchant key to sign the hash. The server server post has a few more steps. Here, the customer requests your cart page, and once they click the Google Checkout button, it makes the request to your server, which then posts the cart API XML to Google Checkout. Google Checkout processes this and returns a redirect URL to your server. Your server then needs to pass on the redirect URL back to the client, and your client code needs a 302 redirect the customer to Google Checkout. So once your customer has completed the purchase, it's time to fulfill the order. The first piece of fulfilling an order is to find out about it. And Checkout has, well, Checkout will automatically send you an email notifying you of the order. And we'll also have the notification API. So notifications are important to sync between Checkout and your server. And uh, today, we'll be talking about version 2.5 of the API. And 2.5 is the latest version. 
Uh, and with it, a few things have changed. So instead of, sending a, instead of sending a full notification to your server directly, instead, we'll send your server a token. And what your server needs to do is then pull Google Checkout using a notification history API, providing the token, and it will respond with a full notification. What this does is it removes the requirement of a SSL certificate for your server. We've also simplified the notification, uh, we've also simplified order processing down to two notifications and one order processing request. The new order notification tells you that an order has been placed and the order details. The authorization amount notification tells you that the, the order is now chargeable for how much and when the auth will expire. Once you've received these two notifications, you can fulfill the order and then send the charge and ship request to Google Checkout. And what this does is it charges the request in Google Checkout and then it also marks it as shipped for your, for your customer. If this were an older version of the API, there would probably be a lot more arrows, and then so many arrows that it might not even fill on this page. But uh, luckily, we've, we've simplified it in the past year. And this is the new order notification. So new order notifications contain a unique Google order number, the buyer's building and shipping addresses, uh, the buyer ID, which is persistent between orders, so you can use it to track your buyers and the purchases that they make, uh, the shopping cart, which contains the items that a customer has purchased. The order adjustment, which contains information about any discounts, shipping, and taxes that are applied to order. And finally, the order total. Next, we have the authorization amount notification. And what this contains is uh, information about the total amount that's been authorized for charge and when it'll expire. The order summary contains a copy of the new order notification, and you can use it to quickly pull order information without making a query to your database. So the final step in fulfillment is the charge and ship order request. In this request, you'll define a total amount to charge up to the chargeable amounts, and if you're delivering physical goods, the shipping information. We also have requests to granularly process, or the process orders, such as charge, ship, refund, and archive. All of the API documentation, including requests, notifications, and a card API, can be found at code.google.com slash APIs slash checkout. There, you'll also find sample code and client libraries. So, oops. Now that we have a basic foundation of knowledge of checkout, from easy to use tools to the APIs that power them, let's see how they're used in the real world. Please welcome Brett Clevenger and Marco Rodriguez from the Steel Network. Thanks, Pong. Steel Network is a collection of deal of the day sites targeted towards women. We launched babysteals.com three years ago and then launched Kid Steals and Scrapbook Steals a year later. This last year, we launched kidcrawl.com, which is a comparison shopping engine for moms that crawls the web for the lowest prices on baby, kid, and maternity products. Marco and I will be walking you through our implementation of Google Checkout on babysteals.com. So, what is babysteals.com? No, we do not steal babies. Babysteals.com is a website that features one new steal every day at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. The community doesn't know what the item will be or how many will be available, but they do know that it will be a boutique quality item that is, up, that is relevant to them and up to 80% off. We offer appointment-based viewing and utilize product expertise, scarcity, and a community of like-minded moms to entertain women around the world. We all know women love to shop. They have a social need to try something new and to get a good deal. We combine them. For all you ladies in the audience who have kids, be careful with this site. It's awfully addicting. As Peng and Mihai mentioned, Google Checkout has a lot of functionality. But you do need to build some sort of interface to organize all the information required to make a purchase. This is a look at what we've built in, in our internal admin, and as you can tell, there's different tabs for the different critical elements that are required to make a purchase. This is where we store the information related to the product weight, the um, images, the description, uh, and a lot of other features. I chose to, uh, we can't go through it in complete detail, but I chose to, to uh, focus on the shipping tab here because uh, as many of you know, shipping can make or break any e-commerce business. Shipping is uh, especially important for us because all of the items that we feature each day are, are very unique in, in size and shape and availability. So 
uh, we built this interface to be able to modify the shipping for each feature that we present. We use carrier calculated most often, but we also have the ability to offer flat rate and free shipping, as well as add additional carriers like FedEx and Media Mail for books and videos, depending on the product. Um, we also uh, designate the country of origin and the customs description to help expedite shipping orders to Canada. In the future, we plan to expand our shipping options by being able to easily edit the ship from address to accommodate external drop ship locations. Marco will now walk you through this, this same thing from a coding perspective. As you can imagine, programming all this chip combination is not simple. However, with Google Checkout, uh, we have simplified the problem. They provide a checkout HTML API where we can include the shipping method according to other needs. Uh, for every customer, we can indicate the available shipping options for that specific order. To use the custom API instruction, what you need to do is you need to place them inside, the, inside a form tag with the ID Google cart-checkout.config. This form will be submitted along with the contents of the cart. The most common scenario for us is that we send the order information to Google along with the request to calculate the shipping based on the weight, like this example. Um, USPS, priority mail, parcel post, FedEx home delivery are some of the shipping methods available, just to mention a few. There are more than that. Uh, if you need something different, like um, a special shipping method not offered by Google, that's not a problem. It is, it is possible to calculate the shipping fee and include it as a shipping option before sending the information to Google. We offer USPS First Class and First Class Mail International package to our customers for order below 13 ounces. If you need to also offer free shipping for some of your products, that's not a problem. It is possible to do it just including a custom shipping method with a zero as the value. And if you need to offer also local pickup, you can do it. That's easy. Um, Google offers the possibility to include shipping restrictions. So you can um, instruct Google where this option is available. We offer only a local pickup for Utah residents. OK, so let's look through the process from the customer's uh, shopping experience. So first thing to note, we are designed for speed shopping. It only takes three clicks to buy an item start to finish using Google Checkout. We start out with a cart that is out of sight, out of mind. As you'll notice in the top right corner, we've used CSS to modify the color band of the cart to match the design of our website. As you add items to the cart, it expands over non-critical elements of the page. As soon as the consumer clicks Google Checkout, we validate the inventory and the max order limit that we set to prevent resellers. If the item has already sold out by the time they click Checkout, we display a pop-up window that tells them that we've adjusted their cart accordingly and allow them to continue on. At this point, as soon as they enter into Google Checkout, they have four minutes to complete their purchase. Uh, we, we set that four-minute limitation due to uh, the nature of our, of our business. Um, Google Checkout does an excellent job of keeping it extremely simple and making it very quick to place an order. They specify the default uh, payment and the default shipping address based on your user setting. Um, do note, though, that having a default shipping address can be problematic for fulfillment because a lot of people forget that, that to change their address after they've moved. They've actually made it so quick and easy to place the order that it's easy to gloss over an address that you recognize, but not necessarily realize that it's your old address. And we have run into that problem a few times. Um, but the benefits far outweigh the, you know, the cost of, of that. I can't reiterate enough how important it is and how valuable it is to have Google process and store all the payment information. Um, it's a, it relieves merchants like us from a huge burden from PCI compliance and other security risks. It really allows us to focus on our core business, not on, on processing payments. Once the order is submitted, Google Checkout sends an email to the consumer with a confirmation, and it also has a 15-minute buyer's remorse window where the customer can cancel their order uh, without contacting our customer service team, which is a, a very nice feature. We currently get about 10% of our traffic through the mobile version of our website. Here's a, a, a look at uh, what 
Google has offered for their mobile cart. It's even more clean and more simple than the, um, than the, the browser version, but it does have a couple of shipping uh, method bugs that they're currently working on, and it doesn't give you the option to enter in a promotion code, which isn't a real big deal for our business model, um, but it does cause frustration and confusion with consumers when we do offer a promotion code and, and they can enter it in through the mobile device. I have uh, complete faith that all those things will be fixed uh, quickly, but um, do be aware of those things. All right, so now that we've covered the ordering process, let's look, take a look at another critical component to online business, with, which is inventory control. Inventory control is very important because the user doesn't have the ability to walk around the store with the product in hand. We feel very strongly that if a consumer places an order and gives us payment, we need to ship that order as soon as possible. We ship orders same day 95% of the time. Come to find out, pregnant women really like fast deliveries. <laughs> Without proper inventory control, shipping same day becomes nearly impossible. Like I said earlier, we're all about speed shopping. So, um, we, we've had to create this uh, buffer system to help uh, create a buffer that uh, can monitor, that can allow us to monitor the speed of sales and adjust our inventory, or, or adjust the sold out status on our page without adjusting the actual inventory. When a customer clicks place order now in Google Checkout, uh, it doesn't have the ability to validate the inventory at that time. Um, like I said earlier, we have that four-minute cart timeout. So within those four minutes, you do have the ability to have some orders come through that had valid inventory when they placed it, but there's several other people in cart during that four minutes, uh, and it can create some oversells. So we created this, this buffer to, um, to help mitigate that and also to help adjust for cancellations that are caused during that 15-minute buyer's remorse window. When items are canceled, we don't want necessarily want our site to go back up available for sale, so we use this to, to be able to see what's going on and be able to control all the aspects of that. Setting the buffer is certainly not easy. It, can, it depends on a lot of uncontrollable variables, the site traffic, the number of variants that we have for sale, the price of the item, a lot of different things. So uh, what we've done is, is made it so that we can at least monitor and watch efficiently and, um, and be able to react, react accordingly. If an order contains a sold out item, we still accept the order, but we make it a, uh, we, we create a status called a pending oversell and ship the rest of the remaining items, validate our inventory, and then take a look at them um, and try to fulfill them if we can or cancel them if we can't. Marco will now walk you through this same process from a coding perspective. To prevent oversells, we utilize the shopping cart JavaScript API to validate the inventory just before sending the order to Google Checkout. A JavaScript hook has been set up by implementing the Google Cart on Checkout Click function. So when the user clicks on the Google Checkout button, it actually, before going to Google, make, makes an a AJAX call to our server to do a final review of the con cart content. This will uh, decrease the number of oversales in like 80%. So now let's talk about how we manage orders. As Pong mentioned, Google Checkout has an interface that allows you to uh, place orders in four different statuses. You have pending, you have charged, you have shipped, and you have archived. For baby stills, we need more statuses than that, so we added quite a few. You'll notice here we added ready to print and printed between the charged and shipped status. We also have different statuses for orders that we're waiting for a response from a customer and we use um, these statuses to manage our local pickup queues. We, um, we use the, the, the filter on the left here to select like orders to help expedite the fulfillment and the, the shipping of orders. We'll, uh, we found that it, it makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker to ship orders that, since we are a deal of the day website that have similar items rather than shipping orders in, in the sequence that they come in. It allows us to uh, batch process um, uh, a lot of our fulfillment. We also use these queues to batch shipped order notification and archive no notifications to Google Checkout. Google uh, Checkout provides a, a really nice peer-to-peer -peer, uh, resource as well for those that, that use Google Checkout. As you can see from this demo, the simplicity of our site matches well with the simplicity of Google Checkout, and the majority of our customers are satisfied. satisfied. 
We've got a 4.8 out of 5 star rate review. We've had over 23,000 user reviews on babysteals.com alone, 89% of which have been a 5 star review. Moms love baby steals and they love Google Checkout. So let's wrap it up about with the lessons learned over the last three years of using Google Checkout exclusively. First off, it's easy to implement. Like Mihai said, it can be set up in less than one day. Google Checkout is simple, affordable, and reliable. We processed over $13 million in revenue for, within our three sites and have processed over 500,000 orders from baby steals alone in the last three years. We've had less than 10 performance issues over that period of time, all of which have been, have been resolved and fixed the same day. Google is, is a trusted brand. We've had um, very few customers uh, you know, mention to us that uh, they didn't want to create a, a Google account in order to order from us. And most importantly, Google allows us to keep it simple. Our business model is, is based on marketing and building community, not on technology. A lot, Google allows us to stay focused. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Satyajit Salgar, and I'm a product manager on the Google Checkout team. Now, Pong and Mihai give you a sense of what the product is and some of the tools we have available. Uh, and Rhett and Marco talked about what it's like to run a successful e-commerce business on top of Google Checkout. I'd like to step back a little bit, uh, talk a little bit about some of the challenges that we see in the payments business, uh, what our plan for success is, and why we really want to succeed to make this a better product for you. Uh, finally, I want to announce a few new things, uh, and then we want to open up for Q&A. Payments, like many other businesses, requires you to crack a chicken and egg problem. Now, what do I mean by that? Buyers continually tell us that they love the simplicity of checkout. They love the security, they love the user experience. Sellers tell us that they like the fraud controls, they love to implement it, but they have a limited amount of time and want to invest in the solution, in the payment solution that will give them the most buyers. Buyers, on the other hand, tell us again and again they wish Google Checkout was available everywhere they wanted to transact. So more buyers makes it more useful to sellers, Having it at more sellers is what actually what most buyers want. So what do you do? The answer, of course, is you do a little bit of both. Uh, Pong described to you our triple rainbow growth. Um, we're, we're proud of that, but this is important for a couple of reasons. Now, traditionally, we've relied on you, our developers, our sellers, our merchants, to grow our buyer network. Uh, you know, people like Rhett and Marco, sites across the web, hundreds of thousands of merchants. But now, as commerce on Google grows, this is something that Google can help with directly. Over the last year, a huge part of our growth of checkout, as well as our buyer base, has been through commerce on Google, through Android Market, through Google Voice, the Chrome Web Store, um, YouTube, which launched, relaunched their, their rental site, uh, Google eBooks, and many, many more. And this is important because when, when someone transacts on Google Commerce, they have created a Google Checkout account. So when they come to your site, they're already signed up and a couple of clicks away from completing their purchase. We, we believe this makes Google Checkout a more valuable product to developers. But that's not enough. We think about how we want to serve developers in three ways. The first, we want to make the tools we have much easier to use. We want to offer you new and more powerful tools. And finally, we want to grow and support our developer community. On the first bucket, making it easier to use the tools we have, we're proud of the work we've done the last year and actually delighted to see the impact that it's had on you, the developer community. Launching AP, API v2.5, actually, we've seen how it's made integration with Checkout much easier. Similarly, we're glad to see the growth in the use of buy now buttons and shopping carts. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the new tools we want to make available to you, and you can find out about a lot of them here at Google I.O. Finally, we're committed through our developer forums and through the developer relations team led by Pong and Mihai to your success and to helping you succeed with Google Checkout. So, what's new? 
Um, developers often tell us they wish that they could have a button where they could have their users actually support uh, their projects, their blog, or something they were working on. Now, for a number of reasons, our donate button is restricted to nonprofits. However, uh, in the next couple of weeks on Google Blogger, we'll be making available the support button, which you can actually use uh, to have your users uh, support your, your blog or your sites. Uh, if you can stay in this room, you'll learn more about Google OnePass. This is a product which you can use to control access to your digital content. Uh, the team has had a lot of success with the news vertical, and they're excited to talk to you about their product. Uh, tomorrow, you can learn about in-app payments for the web, which is a simplified buy flow for HTML and Flash developers. So what should you take away from here? Um, First, I don't want to talk about payments. I want you to remember that monetization is more than payments. Google's offers, Google offers tons of tools for you to, to, to help monetize your sites. Uh, people tell me we have a relatively successful ads business. So think about AdWords, think about AdSense and display ads on your site. Think about using AdWords to get more users to your site. Uh, think about using Google Analytics to understand what users are actually doing on your site and uncover new sources of revenue. Think about shopping APIs to improve discoverability. There are tons of tools that Google offers to help you monetize. But finally, do think about commerce and payments. And there has never been a better time to think about e-commerce. Last year, uh, the industry in the United States was estimated at about 175 billion dollars. It's estimated to grow to 300 billion in a few years, and globally, in a couple of years, it'll cross over a trillion dollars. There is tons of opportunity there. However, the challenges remain the same. Fraud continues to be a huge challenge on online commerce. We're convinced we have the best fraud system available online. Compliance is a huge challenge, especially internationally, and especially if you aren't compliant. Um, but again, this is something that Google Checkout can help you with. Conversions, making sure that once the user intends to buy, nothing gets in their way from completing their purchase. Again, this is something that Google Checkout can help you with. So we have a flexible API and tools to help you build a business. What does that mean? Get started. Create a Google Checkout account. Download some sample code. Check out our docs and our website. Engage with us uh, on Twitter, online, and of course, right now. Uh, so let's start the questions. Uh, and by the way, one more thing. If you hang around a little bit on your way out, Jessica Smallman will have some swag for you to, uh, to, to carry home as well. Uh, and why doesn't everyone come up for questions? Yeah. Sure, uh, if you can come up here, uh, or, or we can repeat your question. Why don't we start there? So there is, so, um, uh, so right now, actually, Google Checkout isn't available in Canada. Yes, except for digital goods and Android market. And one of the many reasons is was the tax system. Uh, so again, that's something we're working on, and we do want to sort of expand internationally. Um, why don't we start, jump, start at the back and then move forward? Uh, the gentleman, yeah. Yes, we, we have a recurring payments API that allows you to do recurring payments. Uh, we've had it in, in beta now for over a year and a half, actually. A long time. We should have taken it out of beta. But yeah, it's, we have it. Um, we, we support recurring payments. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, so how do, you, um, how do you get the money? So people run through the flow, and then they make the purchase. 
How is it attached to some accounts or how, Red, how do you get the money? How do you get the money? Yeah. <laughs> well, you you, um, you set up a direct deposit. So at, at all times in Google Checkout in the interface, you can look at the payments tab and, and see what you you know what what you transacted for the day. And then a few days later, that same amount will end up in your checking account after they've done all the uh, fraud verification and processed all the credit cards and that sort of thing. Oh. So there is a little bit of a of a lag of a delay, but uh, once you get moving, you know it all kind of just moves with the speed of business. Uh, the gentleman back there. Yep. How much does it cost, and can a customer with a credit card use Google Checkout without creating a Google account? Um, do, do you want to take that? Someone else? Oh, yeah. Well, it's a, it's a tiered fee structure, and it's very similar to PayPal. Actually, I think it's kind of identical to PayPal. So it's, uh, the, the lowest is 2.9 percent, and uh, was it? 50? The highest is it goes up to 1.1.9, depending upon your oh, transaction volume per month. Uh, you, you get put in a tier, and it goes from 1.9 uh, to 2.9 percent. Yeah. That's right. That one. <laughs> He's right. Uh, and the second question was about creating a Google account. Right. Uh, no. Yeah. So, so no. So right now you do need to create a Google account in order to complete a transaction. Um, Gentleman right next to you. Um, we do support a dollar, uh, but not um, so we do support it, uh, and you actually find lots of uh, goods on Android Market that are priced you know at ninety nine cents. All my testing uh, orders are for one cent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't for, do that. For micro payments, you should probably attend tomorrow's uh, talk about in app payments. I think that's probably a better venue of purchasing. Um, the it's gentleman in front. Yeah. Oh, he's been has his hand up for a while. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure I understand the question, but we should chat after this later. Um, so, so you mean, will we basically, based on the, the, the credit card transaction, back out the, the elements, um, the, the items? No, we're a level one provider. Um, so the, the, oh, to repeat the question, how do we handle the chargeback process? Um, the, yeah, you know, it, uh, it does happen, uh, but if you do good business, it doesn't happen very often. So um, it, 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 it becomes one of those things where, um, you know, it's a, somewhat of a subjective thing. You try to do as good a job you can with your tracking and all the other elements that can kind of, uh, you know, prove that you've done what you need to do, but at the end of the day, it does come up. It doesn't happen very often. A lot of people, you know, at least in our business, they really did want the item, and as long as you did everything you could, uh, you know, a correct way, then they're satisfied. But yeah, it does come up. Gentleman behind us. Uh, I'm one of those bloggers who wanted a donate button, and I'm confused of the difference between a donate button and a support button. And uh, can I call it a donate button? What, what? No, so you should call it a support button. Uh, and the reason is because of the way we're set up, donate has a certain Connotation and it's applied only to nonprofits. Um, yep, I had the same reaction and expression on my face. But um, that's it. Uh, legally, it has certain implications because of money transfer licenses and the way we're set up. Uh, so, donate as we're set up applies to nonprofits uh, versus legal. Yeah. Remember, I talked about compliance. Uh, this is part of it. All right, gentleman behind you. Okay. Oh, all right. So, all right. So uh, we'll get better at repeating the question, <laughs> uh, or or coming to the mic. Gentleman, the mic. Uh, what are the benefits of uh, using uh, Google Checkout compared to PayPal? Um, so I, I think there there are similarities between the product, but they're essentially they're they're Google Checkout is really meant to simplify the shopping experience. Uh, so it's meant to sort of, the, PayPal provides a couple of products that end up doing something similar. Uh, we believe that we have uh, the best-in-class fraud system and provide a better user experience. Uh, and we have a lot of merchants that sort of support uh, what we say. 
Um, so it's, it's, you're right, there are pieces of functionality that are very similar, and I think experiences as a merchant, experiences as a buyer, will speak to, to the differences between the products. Thank you. Sure. Hi, I work at uh, NPR, and we have a lot of donations that we'd like to process, but um, there's a lot of different entities within our system that would, the money would need to go to. Is it possible for us to have one entry point uh, that would actually go out to many different sources in the end without us ever actually touching the money? Hmm. For disbursements. Uh, I don't think, to the best of my knowledge, we don't support, we don't have the disbursement API that allows you to distribute the income. Um, but yeah, no, do there is, like that? no, there's, there's, there's no, we, we, I'd love to talk to you about your okay. use case, but it's, in essence, there's one bank account that we push the money to. Okay, thanks. Yeah. You're talking about split payments. Yeah. Split yeah. Split payments. Uh, I got it. No, yeah, we don't, uh, we don't support split payments in that way. So uh, UPS delivers Saturday service to certain zip codes, and if a user wants to ship to certain zip codes with, um, on, on a Saturday, uh, is, there like a, is there a call to go to the, like a, no, you can't deliver it there on Saturday type deal. Uh, hmm. I, I thought there was an like API that, that goes there and like um, yeah, so it calculates I, the shipping. And I think what you're talking about is a carrier, ca carrier calculated shipping API. Uh, right now, is Saturday, is Saturday service delivery service is a, a different option than like UPS ground. Would it be UPS ground with Saturday service or is it just UPS mm. ground? It's a separate service. It's a separate it's service? A, it's a, yeah. Then I don't think at this point we might not support that service. Okay. Um, but I mean, we're always looking to improve okay. our functionality. Thanks. That's a question for the Steel Network guys. You mentioned you had a buffer between, I'm assuming, your back end business system that's managing your inventory and the Google checkout process. Can you speak to your process there a little bit in terms of how many items you're dealing with and how you actually? get those things up into checkout and, and manage that buffer process? Sure, yeah, um, it, it, it changes every day. We've, we've toyed with a couple different algorithms to try to do predictive analysis for how many the right number is based on all the different variables, but when it come, came down to it, you know, the human interaction with being able to visually predict before the still goes live, so you know, five minutes before the still goes live, we go in and set the buffer, and no matter what we set, we're wrong. And so what we created is a dashboard to at least be able to see what's going on because one of the things that's unique about us is that we have you know, one product, but we could have uh, several sizes or several co colors available at the same time. All of those different variants sell at different speeds. And so one buffer for all doesn't uh, work. But what we did is, is surface the information so that we could visually see. And we know, you know within minutes, we've actually had orders or products sell at 180 orders per minute. And so you can watch very quickly, you know, what's taken off and what's not, and then you just sit and adjust the buffer in real time. So you can increase it if you, if you low-balled it, or you can start to decrease it if the, the speed in which the sales are happening are slower than what you predicted. So on that slide that I had, you, see, you saw two graphs, and one of them is to show the, the orders per minute to help you kind of gauge, okay, if I'm at 50 orders per minute and my buffer is only 20, I don't have a chance, right? I need to equal those out. But if my, you know, my orders per minute are 10 orders per minute and I have a buffer of 20, then the probability of that many people being in checkout for that four minute time frame is less. But at the end of the day, you, you don't know until it's finally over. And you know, I have to say, it's one of, um, you know, one of the things that, uh, one of the only things that made us uh, work a little bit harder than what we expected. And it's all because of that, uh, the inability to validate the inventory when they hit place order now. You can validate the inventory before they go into it, but there is a, a time frame. And then the other thing to be aware of is that 15 minute buyer's remorse window. That, you know, introduces cancellations back into your system that you have to figure out something to deal with. And, and for us, you know, we make judgment calls for whether we're going to make the product available for sale or not. Sometimes those cancellations offset the oversells and everything washes out and everybody's happy. Something I want to add for you is that it is important for us because we don't take uh, back orders. If you, are allow, if you are able to take back orders, it doesn't matter if you have right. oversell. So we have because, what we have and it's gone. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, on certain carriers on the Android market, you can uh, choose to pay with your billing. Um, does Google plan to do that with checkout, uh, maybe like Bitcoins or PayPal or anything? No, so right now, uh, 
that, that feature is available only on Android Market. And the idea is, it's through checkout, but the idea is we, we support sort of carrier billing uh, for Android Market only. Right? What about like carrier billing for checkout? You think that's ever possible? So, so at least the way we think about it is we have carrier billing for checkout, but for now, there, there are no plans to take it beyond Android Market. Oh. Uh, sure. Do you mind coming up to the mic? Yeah. Or I, I can repeat your question. That's fine. Um, so Apple and PayPal released a kind of like accounts and force number. Mm -hmm. like, do you guys ever talk about that, about how many accounts are actually hooked up to the card? Sure. Uh, so the question was uh, Apple and PayPal released a number. Uh, do we talk about it? Uh, we don't. The only number I think we have right now are hundreds of thousands of merchants and millions of, of buyers. Um, can you uh, can you mention what uh, merchant countries you support? Yeah, so we uh, U.S. and Canada. You'd be amazed at how many orders we ship to Canada. Um, it is you know one of those things like Marco had mentioned. Uh, the way that they they built Google Checkout is that you can you know you can manipulate the shipping options uh, to a lot of different things, and so we've been able to uh, offer uh, you know carrier calculated or flat rate to. Uh, Canadians, and, and, I, and we found that they really do appreciate it when uh, U.S. companies, you know, will go through the extra effort of shipping to Canada. It is more work on our end. You got to fill out customs forms and different things. But at the end of the day, they have limited options, especially for boutique quality items like we sell. So, you know, we'll, we'll have 20 to 30 percent of our orders in a day going up to Canada. They have to wait quite a bit longer, you know, for the delivery, but they're used to it. There's an exchange at the border, and their uh, Canadian post isn't isn't extremely fast. So. But at the end of the day, they, they are appreciative that we will sell to them up there. Because a lot of the, the brands that we uh, sell themselves will not ship directly to Canada. And so they can get the products through us. I think you're, you're talking about for developers, which countries can actually sell through checkout, right? Yeah, I, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I, it, was, it was a very kind well, reply. I just okay, didn't, or, I didn't articulate the question well enough. Um, thank you for uh, mentioning Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> the question I meant to ask was um, uh, what, I, I guess, what merchant Bank accounts, do you guys support? Yeah. For so Google. for checkout right now, for like web-based checkout, it's just the US and UK still. But for things like Android Market, we support a number of additional countries. Do you have a, a roadmap for other merchant countries? Well, we we don't right have a timeline and a roadmap <laughs> as yet. But again, we, we do want to take checkout. Uh, we do want to grow checkout uh, internationally. We've, through starting with Android Market, we've removed a lot of the roadblocks to do that. Uh, we don't have a timeline yet to talk about it. Okay. Sure. Love you. Sure. Sure. Hi. Uh, we'd like to know if uh, Google gets a cut of every sale, a commission. Um, we do have a transaction fee. Uh, so that's, that's the, the cut for, for sales. What is the amount? Uh, it ranges, depending upon volume on your site, it ranges from 1.9% to 2.9%. Oh, was that the question before? Yeah. Yeah, yeah OK. Yeah. I didn't got it. Thank you. But I can tell you, no matter what you do, if you're processing credit cards, you're going to have a credit card transaction fee. The fact that you can use Google Checkout and the interface for free, essentially, um, you know, it really is free. No matter what you do, you're going to pay a fee to process credit cards, unless you're the bank yourself. So um, it is very competitively priced, and one of the main reasons why we selected Google Checkout. Let's go with, uh, to the back first. Uh, one of the questions earlier asked whether you needed to create a Google account, and the answer was yes. But uh, I I'm wondering if you could say more about why that is. It seems like a big barrier to conversion. You know, it it's definitely not the three-click process you're hoping for. If you, you know, I've got my credit card in hand. Oh, I guess I'd have to. There's, nah, maybe there's, not. No, there's there's a trade-off, right? Like that's the first purchase, but think about the second, right? Which is you're signed up. It's you're literally a couple of clicks away, and you don't have to enter your credit card again. Uh, on, on our site, we allow you to create a login after you give us a credit card. Now, that's one of the things you should do. That way, I've got your money, and if you want to purchase with us again, you'll be able to do so. Is the, uh, let me rephrase my question. Does Google want to remove that restriction, or is this restriction something that Google believes is a good thing? Um, we believe it helps the user experience. Uh, and so, I mean, I, I'd love to talk about feedback, but we think this is the right sort of combination for uh, for the user, for the user in this case, I disagree. Thank you. For, from the merchant's perspective, uh, we did battle this, you know, especially three years ago when Google Checkout wasn't very well known. We did get a lot of feedback. I do not want to have to create a Google account in order to order from you. In hindsight, now they thank us because it is that much faster, and the platform itself has grown wider, and now they're seeing more usefulness of that account. So you're right. There was a significant resistance, and we second-guessed it a little bit. We let it go long enough, and uh, 
our, our site is addicting enough that once they do hit that second and third, they, they do appreciate the functionality after the fact. I can tell you for experience that um, like one year ago, we offered both uh, credit card payment and Google PayPal, uh, Google checkout. And um, just the maximum day was like 30% transactions over the credit card. People still preferred Google checkout. And we had a couple of days where Google checkout had troubles and people ha was waiting for Google checkout even when the credit card was enabled. Last question. Last question. Where was your hand? Um, I saw that you can specify uh, the currency in the APIs, and you said it's, Google Checkout is only available in the U.S. right now. I'm kind of confused. Can I have, like, if I have an international site and I'm offering in euros, and can I, can I use Google Checkout and specify that currency, and do you convert the amount? Um, um, I'm not sure which slide it was, but, but so we actually don't uh, offer things beyond the United States and the U.K., I see. Uh, for, I, I, I'm not sure what's, and I guess your currency I was the US, US and the UK. And yeah. I see, so it's only limited to those two currencies right. right now. Okay, got it, thanks. So unless you're doing the Android market or something else, then we also support additional currencies. Uh, I believe we're done, but yeah, we sorry. should ask your question. Yeah. Right, and to be clear, uh, buyers can pay in any currency as long as their credit card supports it. It's the, it's the currency that you charge it. So you can be in another country and pay for something in dollars. Uh, it's more, um, you know, so the, current, the currency that we'll actually charge your credit card in. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.